Hello everyone and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to share a few different tips from modeling to UVs to VEX. There will be something for everyone hopefully. So I wanted to start with this example which is using the slurp function in VEX. So basically I start with a packed object that just has a, a color applied to the front face as you can see that I apply in here and then I'm packing you and we have a single point single prim pack primitives that I'm transforming to a position, so in this case this position, and then transforming it to a target position. And then I want to blend between those two positions and do some rotations in between. So how can we achieve this? So let me press E and let's have a look at the code. So first of all, I'm getting the I'm, I'm creating a time variable where I will do the animation, which is just a fit of time between uh, 0 and 1 second, and then from 0 to 1, just the, the blend amount. Um, then I'm getting the pack transform, both from the first input and the second input, and then doing a slurp, which is like a lerp, but uh, for matrices. So I'm uh, slurping between the first position and the second position, and as a blend amount I'm using the animation, as you can see, from 0 to 1. But in between, I want to add some rotation. So for that, I'm creating in here a rotation angle that I'm going to um, create as a spare parameter. And I'm doing pi, over, pi times 2, which is a full rotation, as you can see. And then I am uh, multiplying that by the animation, so it uh, blends along the way. So it transforms from one angle to another. And uh, then using that angle in a quaternion along the y-axis and converting that rotation uh, quaternion to a matrix, matrix and finally just m multiplying the rotation matrix by that matrix that we have uh, created with a the slurp. Then just using setback transform we can set the final matrix and we, we get this interpolation. And we can come in here and set this pi times 4 and it will do more rotations or only pi. And it will rotate only once, as you can see, only 180, and, but the effect is to do the 360. So yeah, that was the first tip. So in this one I wanted to share how you can create UVs from pipe geometry, let's say this kind of rounded geometry, that you end up with this kind of UVs. <clears throat> so as you can see I haven't modeled these, I have modeled these not using the sweep, so I started with the tube, Oops, let me select this, then did a polyfill, sorted the primitives by Y, did a poly inch, poly inch, then extruded another one, and then in here I selected the, the engons and blasted them away. So as you can see I haven't modeled this with a sweep, and in order to do the UVs I wanted to find an automatic way. Automatic, but requires some work of course. Uh, of course, you can just use a UV flatten and select one seam, but let's say you want to do this in an HDA and you want to do it automatically. So you start with the, the geometry, then we select uh, the unshared but create a boundary group, so it creates a group for each boundary. Then we select one of the boundaries and in a group expand, we expand to full contain geometry and create a step attribute. And what this will do is create this attribute along the mesh, as you can see. So like an ID is an integer. So let me actually get rid of that visualization. Then we select a start point. So basically we, in a detail wrangle, we expand the point group of these unshared points in here and we select the last one. In this case, this point 397. So we select the last one in here. And we set that as point group called start. Then we extend the loop with the the group find path we extend this loop and we get the loop in the in in the starting from that point we get this loop inside and of course we also get these on the unshared points but that doesn't matter because they are unshared and won't be part of the uvs then we convert that to uh, edges and we just uv flatten as you can see and we get we do the seam and we do rectify and we get something like this of course, if you get the UVs upside down, you we can easily we can easily orient them the way you want, just by unwrapping in place the UVs and using that uh, geo as to get the bounding box center of the UV shell. Move it to the center, transform the UVs. In this case, I'm inverting 
so just flipping them around and then making them placing them at the center again as you can see so it stays in the same place and we don't need to uv layout so again pretty useful in case you are doing this type of geometry but also useful if you want to get some overview on how you can play with selections and procedural selections and procedural uvs so I did this vellum simulation that you can see, like wrapping um, a candy. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to show you how you can take masks from the, the geometry input, where I have, for example, in here this, this hit mask, that it's around where it's smaller. And I also have a mask in here for the top part that I've done procedurally. You can look at the files on Patreon on how I did this setup. But today I wanted to share how you can take that mask in geometry and move it into constraints. So, as you can see, it will be pretty simple, just a simple wrangle. And in here, I'm just using the UV sample to sample that attribute, using the position as a sample value. And you can take that mask that now lives on constraints, and inside the solver, you can take that. And let me see, where did I read that? In this case, I'm using, I'm reading it's in the point, so I'm reading that using just ptnum in a point expression, in a point function, and then lurping between a rest scale of 1 and reducing it a bit on that uh, mask. And as a bias, I'm using the mask, of course. So that's how I, uh, what I wanted to share in, the, in this uh, tip. Just using a sample is the easiest way to sample attributes from geometry to constraints. And at the end, we get this result you can have a look at the file on patreon i'm gonna share all the scenes that i've sh demoed in this video so yeah so this one i wanted to show you how you can easily model mockups to to sell online or something like that so in this case uh the way i'm modeling this is by creating first a circle then clipping it in half let me run through the notes resample it symmetrize and fuse to have uh, and polypathing to have a unite curve and make sure uh, the points are um, are mirrored so i always have a point at the center so this is one part then in the other i'm just using a simple shapes uh, rounded rectangle transforming it around clipping and doing the same thing symmetrize fuse and polypath and making sure i reverse then i'm creating two points from uh, from that geometry using a numbers by reading the position of the points and adding two points that I can later add and resample and finally do a skin. And if we look at the result, we can get this resample and define the amount of divisions we want. And the same in here, we can define the amount of divisions we have. Just make sure you have the same amount of points on the two shapes that you are using to skin with. So in this case, I'm skinning these this line that I created and then using those two shapes as a as a second input as cross sections. So this is U and V cross sections. So that's how I'm doing the modeling of the tube. And it doesn't get cleaner than this. Doing a UV flatten just to create the UVs, fusing normal, blurring it a bit, and then playing around with a wrinkle deformer. So let me get back to this. Uh, but as you can see, this doesn't look like crumbled. So what I'm doing is measuring the thickness. So I can get this mask, as you can see. And then um, I'm also creating another mask along the Z. So I can blend it and do a peak. So I don't want to peak on those areas, neither on the small areas. Otherwise, I will get clipping. So, and then I'm subdividing, so this peak in here, similar to what we have done in the chocolate break project, is just creating that crumbled look, as you can see. And I'm modeling this part, which is just a, bund a bunch of extrusions. So yeah, that's how I did this quick, quick mock-up. So I was trying to model a guitar case uh, with a specific design that had this indentation in here, like a V-shape on the top, and then this line extruding out and then some smoothing at the end so hopefully you can see it in the in the recording let me do three point lighting and as you can this is easier to to show you so how did i did that part so after i can run you so basically i'm using an alpha tracing triangulating blessing away some primes 
symmetrizing, remesh, quad remesh, extruding, and you know, you know, doing the basic modeling and then beveling the corners. And that's our base shape. Now, how do I add that indentation? First of all, since we're going to work deform geometry, we need to have uh, fidelity, we need some resolution that we can later unsubdivide if we need. So I'm starting by drawing two shapes, that V shape at the top, that I can just easily mirror. So starting with a curve, just model two, just drawn two curves, then symmetrize it, fuse it, polypath, resample, fuse, then selecting uh, the primitive zero button points. So just saying that primlam is equal to zero in a group expression. Then, as you can see, this lays flat on the Z axis. So I'm going to do a soft transform and move it a bit on those points. Then I'm blasting the one of those uh, brims since I just want to skin the top part and then poly extruding and poly filling it and, and placing it where it needs to be. So we get this sort of placement as you can see and shape. And then it's pretty simple. We can just do um, a simple XYZ dist and we get this distance attribute as you can see that we can blur a bit and just move it, uh, just uh, displace it along the normal and we get the final result which is similar to this and then we can unsubdivide if needed so in case you need to unsubdivide you don't get as much detail but it's still there as you can see so yeah, those were the tips I wanted to share today guys and I hope, I hope you found them useful I'm trying to do a new project on the channel the chocolate split but unfortunately not many of you are interested in that project i will try to fit fit it between videos since not many people show interest in that project i uh, i think i was doing something worth it watching but unfortunately didn't get the views or the feedback so i'm going to still finish that project but meanwhile i will do an other videos random videos like i do on the channel on different topics so yeah, as always, you can grab all the scene files on my Patreon alongside with exclusive tutorials. Every month I do an exclusive tutorial that's about one hour, one hour or more, sometimes two hours of a video going step by step on a specific project. And yeah, feel free to join the Patreon where you support me and you get all the perks. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.